Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Wednesday, April 20th, 2022. The market actually reacted pretty much within the parameters that I had given out yesterday during, during the update. So it didn't really break out to the upside, nor did it really break, on, break down to the downside. Although for this particular sequence, it did make a higher high. And that's a here on the daily chart. So just to kind of dive in, kind of talk about what's going on against what we're now seeing. And because I have a little bit to say about that. In any case, on the big picture, nothing has changed. We remain in the process of the beginning stages of an, an intermediate third wave down. And we know from previous Fibonacci that ultimately there is a very strong possibility that we will end up down about 9,070. And a third wave on an intermediate degree could get us down there. And then we get a fourth wave rally, and then we still get a fifth wave down. So my the ultimate area where I still believe that the market will go is to, on its first journey down, is out to this low, which was March of 2020. So in the area of 66 100 to 68, all in there, you're going to have support because it's within the price area of the previous fourth of one lesser degree. So I'm doing at least a cycle, at least a cycle A. And so, or a primary A, I should say, but we're on a cycle level, the entire corrective phase, which will kick up one more. So you're going to see how we're kicking this up. I have to get the primary going. So if I get at least the intermediate degree completing its initial contribution to the correction, and that would be either five waves down or an ABC down, this is the pattern. This is what we got to do. We got to do it. First, we're, we've done part of it on a minor degree level. And so then we're up one a little bit. So we go up to the next level. If we are indeed falling in an intermediate third wave, then we have to go by the internals. And that then becomes one more towards that initial primary degree. So we're just doing our stepping to get ourselves down to these levels. Again, you're seeing how long things can take. This is last November. This is April. So when we take a look at that, we're like, okay, it seems like it's been a long time, but it's been six months. So it, and we're looking at a, at a corrective phase that likely is going to be 10 to 12 years. So we got to keep things in perspective, but we break it down. I do break it down. This is the big, big picture. So there's no reason to change that big, big picture. That's basically what I'm saying, because you can't, I, I, I find that there are many people, they'll see this and they think that it somehow negates a downside. And I think that's part of what I want to discuss today, because we, we need to realize on the count, how much room would a minor wave two have? So now that's really where I'm going to start tonight's discussion on the market activity. We have been able to count five waves down and we already know and have established that a my, uh, intermediate degree third wave will consist of five waves of minor degree. Those are this color. Now we've done minor one, we are in minor two. So what do I have to compare things to? First up, I have Fibonacci retracements, and I can put that up right now, we'll add them. And as soon as I can get this together, I'm gonna to put it there, add a drawing, and I'm just doing retracements. And I'm gonna put it right down there, we're gonna... Okay, so we already had our retracements for a wave two. So this is what they are. So here is the intermediate degree first and second. I'm dropping it down a degree. So I, I guess we could probably put that, that, that this first, you can look at it as maybe being a, um, 
a 5.0 earthquake. And so the minor degree being 10 times less is a 5.0 or whatever. So, so we're, we're going to, I should put it into stepping stones and not into earthquakes. Sorry about that. But it's just, it's degrees. We're taking it down a degree. There, there, there should not take as much time as that intermediate. So, but we're still, we are. But in terms of the feel and the look, that also plays an important part when you're reading price action and when you're reading how far a particular candle or a particular section has gone. And how does that fit into that big picture? So again, the big picture, nothing's changed. I still believe we're in a very, a very much a longer term corrective phase, and we're just in the beginning part. And within that beginning part, we've done on an intermediate degree, waves one and two. So we're now looking at that third wave down. This is what I've got to go on. Here's the next first wave down on a minor degree. So how far should I get on a minor degree two? Well, here are the limitations. We put in the Fibonacci and we can see that 0.382, so a retracement of 38.2% is 14,317. Well, we've gotten close, but no cigar. We did not touch it or exceed it. So that's actually not the most common. That's the second most common. The most common is here at the 50%, which is 14,498 or 14,500. So now we're putting on parameters and where this market could go. I now know that waves two can take most common to 50, but more often they come up 0.618. Or we have the potential that it could go back to the daily 200, the daily 200, which actually is at 14,775 and still be a wave two. That's my point. So we have a lot of room bringing it down. So we go by what we can count. We go by what does the market tell us? Where is the market in terms of what we are doing? Now I'm going to take this, the Fibonacci's off. We realize we have additional space all the way up to 14,800. So now I'm going to take this off. And we're going to take a look at there's the wave one. Here is the wave two. And wave two is going to consist of an A, B, C pattern. Now, if we look at that, we know from, from, our, from our knowledge of Elliot that <clears throat> an ABC pattern can come in a what we call a zigzag which this would kind of look like a zigzag. It's kind of dump, bump, and then up, or a flat. And a flat's going to be, we'll see a couple of those inside this thing. But now we got to count out this wave too, because we already know that when we looked at the daily chart, it has a shot at 14,775. Oh, 14,800 is not out of the realm of reality. So to see what's happening per each of these companies that is going to be reporting, you're going to drive yourself nuts because they didn't like Netflix, so everything dropped. And you'll see how that will filter down to other individuals. They sold off Tesla. Then they came out and the earnings were well, what they expected, but there wasn't a typical Tesla reaction. I mean, this is a stock known to jump 100 or more points on earnings call. So it did not. And in fact, it zipped back up to the highest I've seen thus far is like uh, 1,032, 35, somewhere in there. So it's already starting to come back off again, not dramatically. So again, and then Netflix was down a total of 122 points, but much lower. It was down at around 215. And so it had regrouped a little bit. So these things are going to continue to filter through. So we must look at our wave pattern and realize, okay, we still have a lot of earnings to come out. What are the possibilities for the upside? Under a wave two, we now know. In fact, to tell you the truth, we can get up to 15,191. You just can't go above 15,268, 269. Don't go above it. You can get up there. And this market has done it. And this market is still individual traders, 
are going on what has happened previously, how other earnings have gone. So I label that and put it into their trading status quo. This is what we do. This is what happens. And a lot of averages and a lot of work is done based on that. But I think quantitative trading has really turned a lot of pages. And so we can get bigger, longer, more exhausting types of moves without either side being bullish or bearish. They're just absolutely 100% trading. So that's the focus, just being able to trade on whatever level you are or whatever time frame you're using. So inside this thing, we already know it can be an ABC. I'm just going to go ahead and take this down to a 30-minute chart and then open it. And so we can actually see. So this, believe it or not, is wave A. Then we had an A, B, C failure here. And then it breaks into a one, two. There's the bottom of it. No, here's the bottom of it. So it doesn't quite get it, it matches it. One, two, three, four, five of three. So it's a one of C, two of C, one, two, three, four, five of C, four of C, one, two, three, four, mm, maybe five. Don't know. Market will let us know. Just like here, this was Netflix. Market will let us know what it wants to do. And you saw what they wanted. They wanted to go higher. Those earnings were in. We now know it's priced, et cetera, et cetera. This was oh, not quite totally priced. So the people that hadn't gotten out there got out here, et cetera, et cetera. But the wave count will take this all into consideration. So part of it is, again, mindset. And in that mindset, yes, these are earnings. But I don't need to necessarily have to digest as bullish or bearish Tesla's earnings or Netflix earnings or whatever. You're going to see somebody else is going to do that, and it's just going to happen anyway. Now, because do, would I believe that because they had a decrease in, in memberships and subscriptions that they're going to drop the stock $125? No, but when I look at it at $225 or $26, I'm like, meh, yeah, Netflix. So, but it gets priced in and the index is going to trade anyway. And we already have an up and a down uh, view of what the market can do. So we stick to that. Now I'm looking for three waves up, but I cannot count that complete yet, even though I can do an ABC, but that ABC mm, may be a, only a wave A. And this, is going to be part of wave B, as I have discussed. I said we could be getting into a box, and that box is going to go, go up and then down, but not really moving to higher highs. They're not getting out of the valley yet. They're all the way over here. They got to it today, looked, said, nah, came back, looked once, twice, three times, and the fourth time they went like, no, boom. So this is what we're going to be going through but it's countable and it's tradable. So where are we? I am at a position where I can consider wave two complete, but when I take it out to the daily, it doesn't look right. If it was up here or here, or even as high as here, now it looks right. Now the market's ripe to just tilt and fall. That is still the direction. I believe the trend remains down. This is a corrective wave or counter trend. If the trend is down, this is going to be a three wave and it's going to be counter trend. Remember the impulse waves under Elliott go in the direction of the trend. That set the trend. So that's going to five waves. They started here and then they followed through and then they followed through and all the corrections were threes. Boom, trend change. So it's following trend. And so I'm looking for three waves, but I'm also looking for, these are periods where traders will think we're going up because so-and-so's earnings, because this earnings, that earnings. Again, it's your emotion, my emotion, your opinion, my opinion. We try to put that all together and sort it out via price. 
That's what we're doing. Where do you think the market's going to go? Well, I'll give you some parameters, but can I tell you 100%? Absolutely not but you trade what's in front of you. And again, even the internals are countable. This was five down. So then we have that one. We're only looking for three up, but it's got to look right. So here's the deal. Sorry, it took me the long way to get there. We're still in the correction. We're still in a wave two. We have the potential to go down. We can go down to 13,828. We can go down to 13,786. But if we break below, unfortunately, if we break, but we have to wait. Unfortunately, unless we break 13,732, there remains a possibility someone's going to toss a good earning or whatever. Market turns and roars. Comes off. We've seen it now. You have seen it intraday. And if you trade intraday, you've lived it. That was powerful. And you look at that, you go like, oh, well, maybe we're going to go to 14,000. But if you're if the noise comes in and starts talking, you say, "Well, why are they bullish? Where are we bullish? How far can it go?" Blah, blah, blah. That's noise. So you got to come in a little bit more in the, in line with what the possibilities are. Then we have dead ringers. We got ringers out there. I have to tell you, when you look at your hourly, so we've now gone back below the two hundred, and things were all turning lower. So that is starting in kind of a negative position. If I look at it. It's starting in somewhat of a negative position. The eight's getting ready to break back below the 50. The 20's looking like it wants to get there too. 200, kind of flat. So the first line in the sand is 14,182. The market has to successfully get above there and turn all these above as well. So these have to turn, get themselves above here to show that, yep, we're going up. We'll go to that next level. We'll go to that next Fibonacci. 144. So we start breaking that, then you're looking at your fibs. And then you're going to get confirmation from your moving averages following everything in that direction. Doesn't matter what Tesla's earnings are, Netflix earnings are, NVIDIA's, Microsoft. Yeah, they're, they're, they're fun to watch. And yes, if you're an options trader and you know what you're doing, there are going to be options, uh, pl earnings plays that you can do and they can be very lucrative and you can do them with defined risk. So you can kind of figure out, you can figure out what your downside is before you put the trades on. So there are a lot of things to do. Okay. So tomorrow be open. I think it's, it could get hairy again. I don't know what they're going to come in in the morning and say, well, gee, we did really, we do like these Teslas and we're now going to you know, push in the stock because we move from that earnings report to Friday's expiration. Things are technical, things are numbers. So Tesla will go according to where the market thinks they can push it for expiration. So you can go in and you can take a look and see what levels are trading, what at the, what, where's at the money, what you're looking at your, at, at your ends, your tails, what those are trading. So there are ways. Any case, in any case, have a great trading day tomorrow. Sorry, I did kind of take a little bit of a long time. Markets are now reopening. And yeah, they're kind of taking the, the NASDAQ back up, I guess. Our next update will be on Thursday, the 21st.